Yeah, I do like some country. I don't know, it's funny. Sometimes I'll be writing a song and I'll be like really focusing on trying it to make it like something suitable for the McDades and then I'll sit back and I realize it's a like country song, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, it's funny. So part of me is wondering like come up with a pseudonym and have a country career on the side. How many albums have you worked with Jeremiah on? Um, three. I have three, and Jeremiah's produced two of them. The best ones, of course. The best ones. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a mandolin? I do. You want to play? Yeah, can I try that oh, yeah. instead? Yeah, totally. That's right. like this. Not loving the sound of the whistle in that, too. Oh, yeah, there's uh, the one. Yeah, just isn't country enough, my whistle yeah. playing. It's just... do you oh, wait, it's beautiful. So it's like, oh, yeah, the pig. <laughs> <laughs> I think got very busy with McDade's where it was like Im almost impossible to do anything else. One, two, three, two, two. I barely ever look five years ahead, but uh, kind of more of an individual career for myself is a personal kind of goal that I'd like to have kind of rolling this year. <laughs> I play with a band called Captain Tractor and just play fiddle and sing sometimes, a little bit, just a little bit. How it all started is I co-produced one of their albums and I'm just, I guess they got used to me. I'll just, if the phone rings, you just usually do it, unless it's ridiculous, it involves parachuting or something. She has some abandonment issues that she didn't have before I left to Holland, where she's less secure when she's alone. Playing music takes a huge amount of isolation. To be really good at playing an instrument, you need to isolate yourself. Just practicing is what you do when you have time off. Having a child, I didn't think it would be like a two-person job all the time. 
It's hard to have a relationship and uh, to not like sacrifice the relationship to be a musician. You know, it's sort of finding the balance between letting some things go but still taking enough personal time to, to feel satisfied with what you're doing artistically. I'll stand by what I said. I really think they need a manager. That's what I think they need, and I think managers can make or break a career. I'd like to see them make one, another great record, for starters. Just get a great record out, and I think there's one just about ready to go, and, and then see what happens from there. You know, because I think all the people who were behind them on the last record are gonna jump right back in and see if this if this matches up, you know, and if it does then anything can happen. Well, Jeremiah got sick, so Jeremiah wasn't able to travel anymore. His doctor just told him he couldn't do it. He needed to start dialysis, and, and that was it. Jeremiah was diagnosed with um, a kidney disease, um, IgA nephropathy, um, or known as Berger's disease. About a month ago, he realized that uh, his kidneys were about 9% and basically non-functional. So he's uh, going to have to go into um, dialysis initially uh, in a week. So we canceled all our shows. Really didn't sort of actively look for any other work until we knew what would happen with uh, Jeremiah. So you know, Those are all good, yeah. You know what like, you have in mind? Because you kind of... You have my, idea my idea is just to go for something extremely simple. Yeah. Jeremiah with a kidney transplant could, you know, feel better than he has in years and have, you know, virtually a normal life. And I, I really wanted to give my kidney, but um, I was rejected. <laughs> Wrong blood type and stuff, you know, I guess. I, I'm pretty much day to day. I, I just, the future sometimes is something I just don't want to dwell on. I really got into playing guitar more when I had more time on my hands, so I'm, uh, you know, why not, if you're on dialysis, learn how to play guitar properly. <laughs> I was 23, 24. I started getting really bad headaches. Eventually they got so bad that I went to a doctor. But by that time I had had 15% left. And so through like diet and diet and exercise basically, I was able to kind of keep it around there for about nine, eight or nine years. Nice little, um, nice little montage of stuff. It was looming all, for years. It's kind of slowly been coming and coming, and we've kind of watched his kidney function decline uh, gradually. And I know they were trying a lot of different things to kind of stem that and to, to make it you know, last as long as it could. 
last year before we went to Sweden for a tour, my doctor was like, you know, yeah, they're done. Let's start you on dialysis. And, and so I was like, well, okay. <laughs> I just went to Sweden. After Sweden, my doctor was looking at the numbers like, dude, <laughs> you're going to die. So um, Jeremiah hadn't told us that his doctors had told him not to do that tour. And he went and did it anyway. You know, he doesn't want to disappoint us. He doesn't want to say, I have to cancel this or I can't, you know, I can't perform. But he was like saying, oh, well, you don't need to cancel shows. You guys go do them as a quartet or go do them with another whistle player. And, you know, to me that just seemed, no, it just wouldn't work. You know, it wasn't, it's not really, to me the three people are really not replaceable and, and it's kind of a three musketeers kind of thing, all for one and one for all. I just, I just stopped thinking about the McDades. It was just, it just was what was. So you have to deal with that. And the f- 
signifies of the whiskey traders and the golden dust hangs in the air with the screams of the black. We recorded the Christmas album, which was, I think, really good for all of us and especially really good for Jeremiah because he did a lot of that in going to dialysis and coming home and recording and doing all these crazy things, you know. I think having that come out this year has shown him that there's lots more to do and, and it's all achievable. It's, it's, there are things that, um, lots of things left to do. Shall not be this. Holly of the mastery as the manor is. Holly, holly, and the first tree in the green wood, it was the holly. What was that? Holly, holly, and the first tree in the green wood, it was the holly. What time? I think I'm not confused. I am confused. Holly, holly, I think I'm not confused. But I might be, I might be. <laughs> I don't think they're an unusual family. They're what families are supposed to be because they come first. The family comes first. And, and that's all that's unusual about it. And that's the way things probably were at some time. But, you know, we're all chasing so many other things these days that maybe our families and the unit sort of takes a back seat sometimes. Thanks for all the help. Good job. So, you two, oh, you guys are at the studio at uh, 9. I got it. 10 a.m. is what I hear. And I'm there at 11? I guess so. Okay. I'll double it. <laughs> oh, that's my purse. <laughs> Thanks, Maya. Oh, and all your money, these CD money's in there. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, I'm incredibly lucky. It's just uh, a lot of people are on dialysis for years or they die on dialysis. And uh, plenty of my family members uh, came forth and tried to get tested and all that stuff. So 
lucky me, I have the most amazing family in the world. So, um, my cousin Katie. <laughs> I definitely like to dedicate this to my cousin Katie because uh, we were supposed to be here last year and um, I couldn't make it. So uh, I got a kidney transplant last December and uh, thank you. So I'll play this. Uh, I can play it now like I do because of Katie. So uh, we'll play it for you now. Ready? Yeah. One, two. One, two, three.
Life is shaky, you know. So what more do you hope for than somebody's able to do what they want to do?